a helicopter um, just a couple days before or the night before was spraying uh, pesticides on mosquitoes in Florida. And guess what? It affected the, uh, the honeybees. So that is proof that pesticides definitely can affect the honeybees. I also do believe, I did talk to some beekeepers that use honeybees basically for pollination reasons, and they do transport them to different areas. And that is stressful to take an animal um, or a bee out of its habitat, and the travel can stress them out to the max. And I believe that could be, that definitely can affect the well being of the honeybee. That's um, a good point. Very my good gut point. instinct picks up. That's that's part of it, and the pesticides for sure. But still, I do believe that there, there's something a mystery that we just don't know. That a missing link of the puzzle. There's a lot of things that could definitely be a, you know affecting the honeybee. Now, honey has made its name, you say, for its amazing powers in Greek mythology and writings of both Egyptians and Romans. Can you talk about that? Right. I deal in a whole chapter. What is it? I'm looking at page 23. Right, right, right. If we go back into 6000 BC, where cave paintings were actually made in Spain that showed men collecting honey from a bee colony. So bees have been around forever since biblical times. Um, in 2600 B.C., beekeeping was established. Honey began to be used as medicine for beauty and trade. Um, that brings us back to present time. I was sent, oh, just amazing um, lotions and creams and soaps where they use honey. Very addicting. You can do it yourself, use honey, you know, for your hair and for facials and for your skin, but you can also buy ready-made products that, you get very spoiled. I mean, honey, honey soap, where it's made from honey, is just amazing. It makes your skin feel so awesome. I have to share you another story that I had where the day where I visited the beekeeper in Reno and his queen bees, um, before that, I went to a high-end um, hotel, and I had a Manuka orange blossom honey bath. It was in a bear claw um, bathtub with 140 jets. It was like a hot tub, and they used a solution of Manuka honey, and I soaked in it for 20 minutes. Oh, my God, my skin felt so smooth. It was just amazing, wow. amazing. And you can buy these products for your own bath. You don't have to go off and pay money for this you know, $50, $60 treatment. You can do it at home. But, oh, my skin, it just felt like silk. It was amazing. Um, and then back, <laughs> I'm going back to the milestones. Honey has been used for centuries and centuries um, all around the world, all around the world. You mentioned also honey cures with a lot of different symptomology from depression to cold sores, flu. Right, right. People love home remedies, definitely. And I have a huge section in the book, Home Remedies from Your Kitchen. So much better than going to the doctor for little things if you don't have to, or if your doctor's on vacation or on the weekend. If you ever notice bad things happen on the weekend, case in point, two weeks ago, oh my God, my upper back molar, I was dying, I was dying. I had the worst toothache I've thought, and I ended up using honey. I remember that Dr. Peter Mullen, he's a researcher of Manuka honey, and I remember he told me he used it on his gums, and I wasn't sure if it was a tooth or a gum issue. I just had my teeth professionally cleaned. I just had them whitened, and I thought, <laughs> what's up with this? My teeth are perfect. There's nothing wrong, but I was dying. I even called the dentist. He was away. Um, saw the on-call a dentist on Saturday, I lucked out, and she said it was a gum issue. I went to my dentist the following Monday, and uh, he just said, uh, plaque, plaque, and yelled at me, clean the tooth. Nothing was wrong, thank God. I was thinking something bad, bad root canal, nothing. Nothing was wrong. But And I have no pain. Everything's good to go. After X-ray showed nothing. But I did use Manuka honey. I put it on it. A 
friend, I had a book signing to go to, and a friend brought me Origil. I looked up on the uh, internet all these terrible side effects from that, and I thought, no way am I using that. And I used Manuka honey, and um, I don't know if it hurt it, but I mean, if it helped it, but I'm sure it didn't hurt it because, again, Manuka honey has the antibacterial and anti inflammatory properties. So I felt kind of good putting that on my tooth where I knew I wouldn't have any severe reaction. But back to the home cures, toothache is one, uh, um, and or gum, gum problems. How about allergies? Well, we talked about allergies earlier in the program. Again, you have to be with right. 50 mile radius from that. Um, for anxiety, it definitely can calm you down. I have put a little bit of honey in uh, chamomile tea and team together. I definitely feel um, relaxed. Um, I'm a type A person. My blood pressure is usually really, really good if everything is going my way. And when I keep swimming almost every day, I can keep it about 117 over 78, which is really good for someone of my age, a baby boomer. Um, I even did an experiment where I put a teaspoon of honey into a cup of chamomile tea and drank it, had the kitty cat on my lap and took my BP, and it was great. It was good to go. So I do believe that it can calm you down. Um, There's reasons why in the book. It's folklore. Again, you won't see scientific studies that honey can uh, beat anxiety at all. A lot of people would think that sugar can hype you up. But it is, but I do include that it's the reason why it may soothe your nerves and uh, lower anxiety levels, it could be because of the vitamin B content and anti-stress vitamin. I was listening to Adele sing over the weekend and how she takes honey in water before she sings and while she's on stage. Hot water with honey. I thought that was interesting. Does she do it too, probably for her voice to make Yeah, it was for hoarseness and also a vocal cord. Right, you know, it's funny. Um, I do a lot of talk shows um, as a guest, and some of the men love my raspy voice. They think it's soothing and sexy, but I'm kind of self-conscious about it. Um, I have used the honey lemon lozenges, the all-natural ones, and I probably should practice what I preach and drink the tea and honey before I do radio um, because I am prone to allergies and sinus. Um, my, my GP knows that my dentist know that, and I've had that since I was a kid. So it doesn't surprise me. And most, I think most lay people know that. Um, also though, it's used for bedwetting. Um, the Vermont country doctor, DC Jarvis, very famous. He did a, a book on, um, apple cider vinegar. That's a huge bestseller. Um, he recommends one teaspoon teaspoon of honey at um, mealtime and before bed. Um, avoid getting water a few hours before bedtime, obviously, if you have children that have a bedwetting problem. Also, a caveat, it's very, very important. Never, never, never. I have the disclaimer right on the second page. I, I stress to put that, uh, emphasize to put that in there. Warning, warning, warning. To avoid infant botulism, do not feed honey to a baby who is younger than one year old. That is all over the Internet. For some reason, it can I, probably because the immune system is not strong. You do not want to give honey to an infant ever, ever, ever. That is so important. And I put it in the beginning of the book because I'm thinking when people get books like this, they'll go straight to the home cures and then they'll just, you know, give it, give some honey to an infant not thinking that. So I made that disclaimer definitely in the beginning of the book and then I explain it more later on um, in the chapter that honey isn't for everyone. Again, there's some people that honey... You just, um, you cannot take it, you cannot consume it. You can use it topically, you know, on your skin, like I mentioned earlier with the Manuka honey for a lot of things. But for some people, you cannot consume it. And I hear it's great for burns. Definitely, because of the antibacterial and the anti-inflammatory properties, just like apple cider vinegar, definitely, without a doubt. And for acne, too, it can, it can dry up acne. And it's not as acidic as apple cider vinegar, which is also good for acne, both of them. 
And uh, also, this is, you know, honey is called a superfood. Dr. Um, Ann Louise Gittleman, she endorsed. 